All right, guys, so this electric motor showed up at our shop and it had a load of things wrong with it. We had to completely rebuild this thing and we're gonna go through a couple of the steps on this, what we did. This is a two-speed electric motor, so this can operate at the same voltage and spin at 3,600 RPM or 1,800 RPM. And we're gonna do that utilizing only one winding. The first thing we're going to want to do is remove any of these shaft attachments. You can see that this thing's in a really dirty environment. It's got dust and grime all over it. So we'll look at some of those parts and pieces as we disassemble this as well. So you're probably wondering, how are we going to get two speeds out of this thing with one winding inside of it? Well, the way that we connect this, we're going to either be able to operate this as a two pole 3600 RPM or a four pole 1800 RPM electric motor. Towards the end of this video, I will energize this and we will run it at both speeds, the 3600 and 1800. As we're pulling all these pieces apart, we want to inspect each one. We want to note any damage, anything that needs to be repaired to make sure that this thing is back to its optimal performance. Now you can see that there's a lot of grease that must be leaking on top of this electric motor. This isn't from greasing the electric motor itself, but something is leaking on this. It's sticky, it's nasty, it's gross. And when we pull that fan cover off, we can see that a lot of that material that's leaking on this is sitting right inside of this fan cover. This is completely disgusting. It's going to increase the resistance of the rotor being able to turn if the fan is hitting this material inside of that fan cover. And more than likely over time, it's going to damage the fan. And these fans, just being a simple little plastic fan, might be a couple hundred dollars just to replace the fan. With every nut or bolt we remove off of this thing, we're getting a little bit closer to seeing the inside of it and seeing what kind of condition this thing is in that we are going to work with. So just because this electric motor is a two-speed, one-winding electric motor doesn't mean you won't come across a motor that is a two-speed, two-winding. We've even done some that are three-speed, one-winding capable of two speeds, and one-winding capable of one speed. Now, at first glance, the winding looks like it's fine, but when we open the opposite end, we can see that carbon that's built up right along that rotor there, and we're going to take a look at the rotor itself. We'll inspect that for damage, and once we remove that out, you can notice these blemishes right along these skewed lines, but these aren't just skewed lines. These are actually rotor bars. Inside of this rotor, there are these bars that are shorted by the end caps of this rotor, and that is what is magnetically coupling this rotor to our winding. We can use a trick and we'll stick this rotor onto a growler, which is going to induce current into those rotor bars. And you can see that gap right in the middle, right where that damaged bar was at. That means we have broken rotor bars. So we had to send this rotor out to be completely rebuilt, which took about six weeks. And when I opened the box, I was really surprised to see that it was balanced because that's just one less thing that we have to do. But of course, when I pulled it out, the text went a little farther to the left than I knew, and it was not balanced. So we can drill through these little nubs and we'll add weight where we need to. We're going to use a Dynabel balancer so we can add a known weight at a known location on this. We can spin it, rotate it, and the transducers are going to tell us where we need to add or remove weight. After we went through the entire balancing process, we can reassemble this. We're going to put brand new bearings on this electric motor and then we will be able to test run it. I did not get a ton of video of the rewind process of this because I was not the one that stripped it. I did do the rewind of it, but I did not take the data or information prior to that. We're going to use an induction bearing heater, which is going to heat the bearing up just enough that we can slip it on that shaft. And then we can start to mount our end bells. We're going to have to wait for those bearings to cool off. When you do use the induction heater, you have to wait for the bearing to cool off. Otherwise, it's not going to fit inside the housing that it goes in. We can then slap these bearing retainers back on. You can see a lot of these parts have already been cleaned and sandblasted, so this thing's going to look really nice at the end, trust me. After we've got those bearing retainers locked down and secured, and you can see everything is spinning freely, we're going to go ahead and slap these end bells back on. We will tighten those down. I'm not going to put the fan or anything on until we test run this. So at the bottom of that, you can see constant horsepower connection. We have a 1 Delta 2Y connection. Here is our high speed. And then we can switch our connection and operate it on our low speed. And both of these are going to be giving out constant horsepower. Now we'll go through the process of cleaning all of these parts. We're going to have to redo all of our leads inside this pecker head. So this actually has a little terminal block that sits inside of it. So we're going to redo that terminal block as well. You can see that we've terminated all the connections inside of this. And I'll show you one more time what this thing looked like when it showed up at our shop and what it looks like now when it is leaving our shop. This has been completely tested, completely rebuilt, and ready to go back in service. I appreciate all the likes and comments and follows. Make sure you guys are clicking on my bio. I do have a link to YouTube in there where I'm starting to make longer videos. Cheers.